But I'm thinking back to he, she who will not be named. And the veiled hints that there was something wrong with me. So that set off huge paranoia chain. That I'd done something, that there was something. But it wasn't ever said. So that left me spinning. Um, so yeah, I think I think I think that probably was the worst thing to happen because it lasted six months of this veiled hinting at a time where I was recovering. <clears throat> and th the upshot was that I had these inner conflicting parts. One defending, saying, I'm all right, there's nothing wrong with me. She's all wrong. I don't know what it is. And another saying, what have I done? I must have done something. I must be bad. And I had six months of that. At least six months, I think. In the end, it got pinned into something like, you didn't put a chair out when I came to join the meeting. And I didn't have the courage to say, that's a lot of twaddle, by the way. Um, I didn't have the courage at that point to do that. Um, but there was still this strained, not being said thing that lurked even after the you didn't put a chair out conversation, which was supposed to clear the air. It wasn't clear. And it was really tricky and I didn't have the courage. I didn't have the courage. I had another part there that was going, scared, scared. Um, I didn't have the courage to actually say, I'm not enjoying this and I don't want to do this anymore until one day the opportunity presented itself. Um, when I got a row for not having told her about a meeting that she missed out on because she refused to be part of the group, um, the media that was arranging it. And somehow it became my responsibility to be her um, personal secretary. And that was my that that was my opportunity to go, I've had enough, I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. So I wrote and said, you're too toxic, I'm, I'm not doing this. And uh, that was it. And, and I had no intention of having anything more to do. And then a few months later, just as I was on my holidays, that was her choice to reply, knowing I was on holiday. There's a wickedness in there. And I didn't read it. I passed it over to Hutch to say, should I read that? And he went, no, don't read that. So there was obviously more that would have uh, destabilised me further, I think. Um, I'll never know what was in it. And you know what? I'm absolutely fine with that. Um, and, the, and I think apart from that, it's a six, well, it's probably about a year actually of, the, well, I don't even know what you would call that. Well, was it bullying? I, I have no idea if it was bullying or not. I don't know what it was. But it did a huge damage. There was a cruelty in there because at one point I remember saying, do you know, I, I'm, I'm really frightened that I'm going to die. Oh, don't be daft, we all die, was the kind of... So the, all the way along, masquerading as a friend, but actually running... A, she was running a programme about annihilation. And I wasn't smart enough, brave enough, willing to really see it. I don't think I had the strength to see it at the time, actually. I see it now. And I feel bad because I think, well, this is my take on it. And I'm pretty certain if you asked her, her take would be the exact opposite. So how much of this is down to, you know, how I see the world. But all I know is that I, I was really quite unwell because of this for quite a long time. And that's not acceptable. You don't do that to people that you care about. So Absolutely. Not in my life anymore. Not will ever be, ever. Her loss. And I, actually, I don't mean that. That came out, that was from a place of defence. I don't actually mean that. Uh, that, that was that defending part that was like, nee, yeah, I'm all right, really. Um she has I'm sad. Lost out, though. She has lost out. She has. On you. Yeah. Because she could yeah. have had something very different. Yeah. 
and and so I can say I think it's her loss yeah. but I'm seeing it from another part yeah. of me yeah. mm-hmm. that is genuinely thinking about the the pity of the loss of potential connection how it could have been how it could have been yeah exactly yeah, yeah. so out of my life I'm yes gone. and um, I'm, I'm okay with that yeah. I'm scared that I'm oblivious to oblivious about to I don't know what, what that is um oblivious about my impact because um yeah that that scares me a little bit because I kind of do go thundering on a lot um and I often wonder what that's like to be on the receiving end of <laughs> if I'm in full flight in full steam um, and there's another idea and let's do this and so I, I think and I know I'm a bit like my dad I have some of my dad's qualities I have some of my mum's qualities and people used to always say what a strange man he is why did he just do that you know why did he think that way so I think maybe some of that is in me and in, in my doubt in place of there I am bashing on um, and maybe book are going too much information or slow it down or, or I don't know. And it'd be lovely if everybody just went, no, I'm not okay with that or whatever. But I guess I'm scared that, well, maybe this is predicated on she who will not be named, who obviously hid stuff for a long time and then exposed it but not properly and that's that paranoia if you like just kind of lurks down in a wee corner it's like you know is this person okay that I've just said come up with this idea or that I'm working at this because I work at a hell of a pace we both do and when I'm working with somebody I don't slow my pace yeah why should you Kathy no but I mean I'd be happy for them to say Okay, I'm out. That, that's me. I have to stop now. Bye. Okay, bye. That's fine. I'll carry on. <laughs> so I think that 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 would be my initial. I might think more about that one. Yeah. I have a feeling, if it's okay to say, that you've been told that you are too much. Maybe. A bit like me. Maybe. Because we do have lots and lots of great ideas. We're both very creative. And we both can really steam on and do a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And other people get into that, comparing themselves with us, find yeah. themselves lacking, and then c- attack us for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like your fault. Just, yeah, absolutely, I can't keep up. It's your fault. Yeah. Could Rather be. than just being, well, yeah. this is where I am. This is where you are. I'm calling it a day. Enjoy yeah. the rest of your day. I'll see absolutely. you tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So space for both of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you're probably right, actually. Yeah. And even if it's not said explicitly, you know, I was too much for my mother because she said I was diagnosed as being hyperactive. Oh. Um, and I know sometimes Hutch will say, oh, thank God you're going back to work tomorrow. <laughs> but I've learned to pace down to meet his requirements. That's okay. Um, but yeah, so I probably do have that lurking in there that, yeah, I, I am on like a steam train. Some days, some not, but most of the time, yeah. That's a tough one. I'm just trying to think um, of what might be the worst thing. I think it was when um, my stepmother, I almost said step monster because that's what I call her. <laughs> my step monster, um, when my father had a stroke and I was an adult and we had an estranged relationship. Yeah, you know, my father was, you know, abandoned us. He was a narcissist. He didn't pay his child support. Um, I tried and made an effort when my girls were young and it was kind of during that effort period. So I was a young mother, little children, and he had, was in the hospital and had suffered a stroke and they were in another state 
And she called me not to tell me, you know, that your dad is in the hospital and blah, blah, blah. Well, she did tell me, but it's your fault. Yeah. So that hit me like a ton of bricks. But there was enough maturity in me, even though I was still pretty young, I was still in my 20s, to say, no, that's not my fault. It's a combination of lifestyle and circumstance for him. You want just one thing? <laughs> oh, I don't. I really don't know. I, I couldn't pick. I couldn't pick. It's just. It's all. It's not even words anymore. It's just one big. I don't know. It's not even a cloud because it's too um, solid to be a cloud. It's just one big mass. If I try and think of a word, it's just this big mass in front of me. I couldn't, yeah, there's no way I could pick one word or even one person. It's, it's just a big solid mass of stuff. It's, I think it's all of those things into one and that's why I can't pick, pick one word because that mass is so big um, and it's so chock-a-block with words and actions and feelings that, yeah. A woman after my sister had passed away in a car accident unexpectedly, a woman that was a friend of my mother's and I was a young teen and my sister was an older teen, and a woman said to me, don't cry. She put her finger in my face and said, don't you cry. You need to be strong for your mother. And that was the worst thing that anybody ever said to me because it has affected me the rest of my life. I'm in my mid-50s, and it's still affecting me. So that was the worst thing anybody could have ever said to me 